I'm Claire from Creative The Otter Way. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stamping Up in the UK. Thank you for joining me. Um, I try and do a weekly craft along tutorial that's not too tricky and always has either a wow on the inside, which are my particular favourites, or a bit of a wow on the outside. Um, today's craft along is exactly that. Um, it's a floating panel card. So if I just show you the samples that I've made so far. So this is the first one. Um, I made a card a couple of weeks ago that was very similar, but these, the panels actually look like they're floating on the front. So it's just got a lovely belly band, which is just a strip of card, one inch card all round that's been decorated. And then these two panels come out and then these two came up, come out and I've actually chosen to use designer series paper in the back of my card. Um, a fairly light one so that you can still stamp, stamp a personal message. But I just like the effect of when you open it, it's not just plain inside as well. So um, I don't know if you can see from that, but that stands rather nicely. It will stand open as well. So if you wanted to do something a little more fancy on the inside or, or, or stamp something, a scene or something, you could do that as well. So this one was made with the By the Bay paper, um, which is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you're picking that up on the camera, but it's got like a sheen to it. Um, it's really tricky to decide which side of the paper to use, to be honest. Um, but then that happens so often for me with stamping up paper because it's generally all double-sided. Oh my goodness, it's like I fight with myself which side. And then just to show you a different make, this was my um, first one that I made and I've used it with some retired paper that I've got left hanging around. Um, and I was gonna do all of the panels the same color so you get a real effect, but I didn't have enough of this background paper here. So I put a different style of paper on the front and I actually prefer it. So the ones that I've made going forward, they've got different papers. Um, I fussy cut some of the butterflies from the inside paper because this one really is a bit of a wow when you open it because of the butterflies. Not so easy to write your personal message. So what I think I would do is die cut maybe this shape and put it on the inside so it gives me somewhere to write or somewhere to stamp. It depends who you're giving it for really. You could put um, a panel on the back so you could write your personal message. Um, it's up to you. I also, the more I look at this, the more I think that that could have a message going down. You know the thin um, alphabet dies that Stampin' Up! have just recently brought out. I think that's crying out for a message. So I think I'll make one of those a bit later. So what papers are we going to use today? Um, I'm a bit in love with the Regency Park papers um, you can see I've used a really lovely die cut on the front and this is actually from the same set um, so let me show you those quickly before we start so the Regency Park paper is I've not got that much left but I'll go through it it's very florally if you're into florals it's perfect for you I quite like it because it's got small florals um, so it goes really nice on cards. It's just the right size. And then if you turn it over, there's all sorts of pinks and blues going on. There's a little bit of green as well, um, but they really coordinate lovely. Nice stripes, really lovely papers. So we're gonna use those papers. And the suite in the catalogue, in the mini catalogue, that, comes with Sentimental Park stamp set, really lovely floral, two different size fonts, which I love. And then the dies are these ones, and these are the two that I've actually used. So I've used this one. So you can see that it die cuts out with some flowers. Um, and you can add your other flowers on the top if you want to. I just really liked it like that. And then this is the one that I used on the By the Bay, and it's just... Um, just stitched around the edge or looks like it's stitched which again is um, I'm a sucker for a bit of stitching um, I just can't help it as soon as I see that the dies have got stitching I'm like oh that's me um, this is some of the flowers so what I tend to do is that I cut loads out mainly in white 
um, to be honest. And then I just colour them as I need them with my stamping blends um, because it just makes sense to me. And there's some of the background sentiment ones as well. And then I store those inside either the dies or the stamp set so that when I need a quick card, you know, when somebody's just reminded you, oh, it's Auntie Jo's birthday, have you sent a card? And you're like, nope. Um, I just get one of the cards out, slap some of those on the top and we're done and we're away. So be prepared. <laughs> So today's make we are going to be using with Balmy Blue, um, this lovely paper. And then the paper that I've chosen from this set is actually this paper because it coordinates really lovely. And the inside paper is this because again, it coordinates so perfectly. So they're the colours that I'm going to use. You can see that I've already cut some ready just to cut down your watch time. But I will go through it with you step by step. Now this is the size of that you need. It's called a floating panel card. Um, there is quite a few different ones around. One of my favourite tutorials is with Susan Campfield. Um, she does this really nice little fancy edge at the top of hers, which is really nice. And she also shows you loads of samples. So if you want to see some more samples before you have it a go, take a look at hers. Um, I've resized mine a bit for the UK, uh, just for the envelopes and the cards that I give out. So you will need a card base that's five and seven eighths by seven inches. And then we're gonna score both ends. And then the panels that are on the front, the larger one is uh, two inches by five and seven eighths. And the smaller one is one and a half inches by five and five eighths. Now I've just given you the cards for the the sizes for the actual card. If you're layering with DSP on the top, you're going to have to decide, do you want to go down an inch or an eighth? Um, I always tend to go down an, imp, uh, an eighth, um, but I know lots of you like to go down an inch just because it's easier to cut. So have a play around and see what you think. There's a little bit of a paper mechanism bit going on. So if I pull that panel out, you can see there's like a little section underneath there that I'll talk you through. So that's what that size is. So it's one and a half inches by four and seven eighths. And I don't think I've put on there, but you actually need two of those. Um, let me write that down. Because otherwise I will forget. Ooh, okay. And that's about it. So enough waffling from me. Let's make a card. So I've got an A4 sheet and the piece that I need is five and seven eighths by seven. So I know that that will fit across that way. So on my long side, I am cutting at five and seven eighths. Okay, just straight across and then I've got that piece that I'm going to use in a minute. Now this piece needs to be at seven inches. So we've already cut it at five and seven eighths. So I'm just opening my trim out, finding seven inches, okay, which is there. And you end up cutting this bit out. Now, you may or may not need that in a minute to put that, put that to one side. It depends whether you want to use all your scraps or you just want to collect them. So keeping that with the seven inch uh, size at the top, we're going to score both ends. Um, you see, I just find it easier to explain to you to do it that way. So first of all, it's going to be half an inch. So remember your scoring. So get rid of that cutting blade because otherwise you will not be happy. Um, I've been making these cards all day and the amount of times that I've cut instead of scored is just unbelievable. <laughs> so half an inch and then one and a half. It's when you're trying to remember too many things at once. So half and one and a half, and then spin it round and do it the other side. So a half is there, scored, and one and a half scored is there. Okay, now let's put that one in and move that. So this is your base card. So on the first score line, that gets folded over that way. Okay, like that. You can use your bone folder or whatever you use to do that and then fold it back that way. Okay, 
and just make sure you've got a nice crisp edge and the same this side just fold it over and then fold it back on itself there okay so it's just like that okay and that's the bit that's going to open now it's up to you if you want to put this back panel on now or just do it at the end i'm going to show you how to make the whole card and then we'll decorate it so that's our back panel um, our base card done actually so we're going to bring back in the other half of the card that we just cut off and we need two panels for the front that are two inches so two inches and this time you do want to cut so two inches i'm just going to cut two at the same time just because it makes more sense to me okay two inches and these need to be five and seven eighths so basically the same size as your card base so five and seven eighths which they should be yep lovely okay so they're your two inch panels now what i like to do is i like to put the dsp on mine straight away so i know which is which so I've already cut two DSP panels that are one eighth of an inch smaller, okay? So these are two inches. So this is one and seven eighths, and they're five and seven eighths. So this is five and six eighths, or five and three quarters. And I'm just gonna glue those straight on. That is a nice yellow, isn't it? I really like those dots, but I don't think it goes with the balmy blue, so I'm not having palpitations this time about using the wrong side nice color though so that is going on there and i've just got ever such a slight border around because i'm only doing one eighth of an inch border so that's that one exactly the same thing with this one and my glue is about half full so i'm hoping it's going to play nicely and come out as i squeeze it okay so that one's going on there and i've got my two panels just about get that in the middle okay now I'm going to bring my card back in and I'm actually going to stick them on so they form part of the base and what I'm going to do is stick them on either side like so so because you want that to come out all you are doing is putting glue on this strip here and then you're lining this edge up with this edge ish you don't have to be too particular about it and you're lining up the top and the bottom and that's it top there bottom there job done and then the other one comes over and you glue that in um, it doesn't matter if they cross over um, but they shouldn't they should just about meet so we're just putting some glue on that strip this is such a lovely make because it looks like you've gone to a lot of time and effort because actually you have, but it's not too difficult to make. So I'm just lining that up with the top. I'm just lining it up with the bottom, just looking along the edge to make sure it's done. And then I'm just folding it down. OK, so that's that one done. So now that will come out and it just looks like it's always been part of the background card. I'm going to do the same with this side. I'm just going to put glue on this strip here. Okay, just like so. Bring that over. And doing it exactly the same again. Just making sure that it's along the edge. That it matches at the top, matches at the bottom, and that they meet in the middle. Ta da! Love it! Okay, so that's the first bit done. So that's quite similar to the card that we did a couple of weeks ago. Now we need to do the floating panels. So we need to make the mechanisms, the mechanisms, and we also need to do the front panels. So let's cut the front panels first. You've still got a piece of card left. From your original A4. Now this needs to be one and a half inches by five and five eighths. So one and a half inches. One, 
XD2 together. One and a half. Okay, and you've got a little bit left, which I suppose you could do another panel on the front and make it a free panelled card, float an extra floating panel on the front. One and a half by five and five eighths. So that's about there. So it's not too much to come off the end of this, just that bit. And five, five eighths, another bit. Okay, let's do that. And again, I've already cut my paper. The paper is one eighth of an inch, so if it's one and a half, it is one and three eighths. So that's just going to go on there. So let's glue that on. And there's that yellow again. I think the last card I made was using that side of the paper, the Mango Melody. Um, with some lovely navy so take a look at that card because if you like this one you'll definitely like that one um, okay and this is the same one again that's what's good about this regency park paper you've got a bit of red a bit of pink a bit of navy some blue and some lovely um, sh shaded spruce as well which when you think mm, shaded spruce is quite a dark color but they really match lovely together. Stamping up a very good at coordination. Okay, so that's the front panels done. So we're gonna put those to one side. Now the mechanism bits. So you need two pieces of card that are same as your base card. So this is Barmy Blue. And they need to be one and a half inches wide by four and seven eighths long. And then you're gonna score them at half inches. So at half inch and one, and then obviously it's one and a half. So you end up with a three panelled rectangle. And you're just gonna fold it over one way and then fold it over the other way. And then just press down with your bone folder and just make that, those um, score lines really nice and crisp. Do exactly the same with this one. So what you end up with is a Z or a like that. Let's do it that way, and you can see it's like a Z. So you're just going to do it like that. Now it's really important to stick these on the right way round. So we're going to bring the base card over, and what we're going to do is stick one on one side and one on the other and you're aiming for roughly the middle of your panel and what you want to do is have this open edge so this pit bit here is flat so that the rest comes over okay so we're going to put that edge first so we're going to turn it over and put some glue and what we're going to do is we're going to line it up with the dsp rather than the bottom of the card so the glue was on that side just on one edge. Okay. And that is going to go in the middle and line up with the designer series paper rather than the bottom of the card. Which, on a card where you've only got one eighth of an inch frame, it's not so critical. But if you're using a wider border, um, a quarter of an inch then you do need to match up with your designer series paper rather than the bottom of the card it just brings it up a bit now this one we want this one to be look the same as that so turn it over because it needs to be that way round so that it expands out there and we're just going to put some glue on this so I've just flipped it over in my hand so I remember which way round it is Flip it back over and I'm aiming for the middle of my card again, lining it up at the bottom. You should have checked that so that you can see. Line up at the bottom with the designer series paper and just trying to get it straight in the middle. And then that just goes down. Okay, so that gives you your two mechanisms. And then we just stick the panels on. 
this time the panels match with the bottom of your card so they come up slightly shorter but that's part of the effect and again you're putting glue on this piece and bringing the panel to that oh it's getting tougher to get the glue out come on you don't want to mess me about now okay there you go so there's my panel i'm bringing the panel to the glue and i'm just looking to see if it's in the middle of this frame now because the papers are the same it's probably quite tricky for you to see um, that's why it's also quite nice to use two different papers but now when i open that bit comes open and then the card comes open and that's it we just do it the other side this is exactly the same love how this comes together so just put this one on and then it's just the belly band to do and the inside panel so there's that make sure it opens exactly the same Ta -da! oh not ta -da yet okay so this is going on the inside now the size of your card if i flip that over it's um, four inches by five and seven eighths. So my paper DSP that I've cut to go in it, it's just shy of that. So I think I did three and six eighths by three and, no, three and six eighths by five and six eighths. So three quarters, five and three quarters by three and three quarters. <laughs> And that just fits in there but obviously i want to do it on the inside oh that's quite nice as well would that be nice hmm, i don't know now because that's a bit that sort of blends in no because when i stamp on there i want to be able to see it whereas if i stamp on that i'm not going to be able to see it right phew always happens which side of the paper to use. So I'm just putting Tumbo glue on mine because it gives me a bit of wiggle room, but you can use whatever glue is your personal choice. Now I'm just gonna fold that back because I need to see where I'm gonna stick. Um, and I'm just concentrating on the middle panel. That gets stuck down there. And then on my stamp set, I'll have a look and stamp the sentiment on there. So, ta -da, belly band. So I take a one inch strip of the same card, okay? And what I tend to do is I line it up with the DSP this side, okay? Just about there. So this is a whole A4 sheet, but it's one inch wide. And then making sure that's level, I just fold it round with my fingers and bring it round this way so that it meets like so. Now, because I don't want that edge to be seen, I do it this, I open it up, put this bit first and this bit comes across because I know that this bit coming across is gonna be right over at this edge. So, put a little bit of glue on there. Oh, come on. Okay, and put a little bit of glue on this edge. And then what that allows you to do is level your belly band so that you can't see that it's wrapped around. So that just matches up with there, that matches up with there. Ta da! Right, then I've got this die cut to go on here. I'm just going to stamp a sentiment on the front of that. So let's have a look. Um, I really like the let's celebrate and let's celebrate you I think it's quite nice and happy birthday or best wishes let's celebrate you best wishes okay so let's do so let's celebrate you first okay is this gonna because I'm trying to do it at an angle please pretty please oh that is a lovely font isn't that a lovely font it's really pleasing. Okay, what about the U? Is that going to be a bit shouty? No, no, let's do it. U. Okay, now this is going to be tricky. 
Let's celebrate. Yay! Put them right in the middle. That's lovely. Mind you, it is in night of navy. I do like night of navy. And then, what should we have? Happy birthday. Oh, there's quite a few choices. Look, best wishes just for you, your anniversary. Um, let's celebrate you. You're amazing. Yeah, let's do that. That's a really nice thing to say. We're not very good at taking compliments, so let's give one that they can't ignore. You are amazing. Oh, I love that. Okay, so that's that bit. And then what I need to do is put that on there. But I'm going to use some dimensionals to layer it up. Now this is comes right the way across. So I'm going to put one in the middle. And I'm going to put one either side. And that should be enough to hold it in place. And then we'll have a look if it needs any more decoration. Because on the other card I put some butterflies on, didn't I? So maybe it needs some flowers. I like how this bit comes apart as well. Just slightly so you can tuck something behind there. Let's have a look at these flowers. What would they look like on? So I wonder if we could put some detail on. Let's have a look. Have I got? only got my markers here um, let's do it on here let's see so normally I do this with stamping blends but I've only got markers right next to me so let's quickly just look what does that look like I've just coloured over the top oh yeah that's nice okay let's do that again it's just enough that it's not too in your face. I like this. Okay, so that one's going to go there. That one's going to go there. Have we got another one? This is why it's good to die cut loads. And then you can just play. Okay, last one, I think. Because it's good to do threes and fives. Always do odd numbers. Thinking like it needs a little bit of pearls or something on it as well, just to make it a little bit more classy. Okay, right, let's see. Where could we put these? Take those off. Take those off. Let's put a little bit of glue there. Oh, come on, glue. Play. Now it's going to come out too fast. There you go, there's one bit. There's another bit, mm. and another bit there. Okay. So that bit's going to go here. Another one is going to go here. And this one is going to go there. Oh, that looks nice. Okay. Let's bring the others in. Although one is retired paper, I'm sure you've all got paper in your stash that you use. And if you don't, get it out because making loads of cards in one go is perfect for this. Okay, so that's one we've just made. This is the one by the bay and this is the retired one. Love it. Which one's your favourite? Do you know what I've just realised? They're all blue. <laughs> Never mind, they're florally blue or seasidey blue or butterfly blue. If you've enjoyed watching my video and you'd like to see some more, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified every time I post. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.